But next up, we've got the North region. Um, first up, we've got Illinois. Um, Illinois is always a fun state to cover because you really never know what to expect out of it. Um, a lot of times you'll see two or three top players um, who will go on to do pretty well at Worlds. This year, I think we've only seen one come back from last year. We had uh, 14615 turbocharged do a pretty darn good last year. And they're back with a pretty solid 52.8 OPRC uh, with no penalties and have a solid 84 point high score. Um, I'm really interested to see if we see Unknown Element come back and Nyan. Those are all really good Illinois oh, yeah. teams. We even saw a World Championships at, at Illinois last year. So I'm very excited to see that. Turbocharged, I think we have another really nice, um, simple robot do pretty well. There isn't anything that jumps out as, wow, that's a really cool engineering challenge, but it's really effective for being as early in the season as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I'm uh, really excited to see how teams like Naya and, as you said, do, uh, will do because they've always had some pretty crazy robots in the past. Yeah. I'm always excited to see what Naya does. They have <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to address in this match is uh, if you see um, turbocharged, in turbocharged uh, their intake is very similar to the relic recovery intakes we saw, you know, with the two big green wheels in the front and then the slightly smaller uh, wheels in the back. I mean, do you think, like, uh, what do you guys think of that this year? Um, I'm going to I... That was the first thing that I actually told my team uh, as soon as I saw, the, or as soon as I saw the game, I was like, "Hey, we've done this before, right? <laughs> like we we've <laughs> use use what we've learned mm -hmm. from Relic Recovery because right. um, I I right. personally believe that it's it's very similar um, mm -hmm. in terms of just how the robot can interact with the game element. So yeah. I always I told my team to to use what we've learned. I think that every team who's had that opportunity to play Relic Recovery should be able to use um, use the, the knowledge that they gained from that game um, into making the most efficient in intake they can for this game. Yeah. Uh, before we go on to more discussion of the intake, one thing I wanted to point out really quick here in the video is you saw how long Turbocharged had to wait while their partner placed the next stone. I mean, that's an issue we're really going to have this season. And if teams can figure out a way to minimize that, I mean, you'll be golden in your matches, in your if, uh, alliance selections especially. Yep. Um, Find your partners and yeah. practice them before every event. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, another thing with the intake is I'm just really excited to see how teams with like really, really top intakes in Relic Recovery translate that over to this year with Skystone. I mean, if yeah. you look at like Gluten Free and Crack and Pinion, their intakes in Relic Recovery, I mean, it just sucked the block right up and you never saw it again. Like, it was mm -hmm. so quick. Mm -hmm. I, oh, yeah. I think one of the big advantages in Relic Recovery of having a good intake was having an intake that didn't jam because you mm -hmm. had a square element yeah. and it was really easy to right. get a square element jammed in an intake. This year, you've got a really long rectangle, oh, yeah. which is just yeah. so much easier to intake. But another note on that is that the stones are a lot harder in material than the yeah, glyphs definitely. were. So yeah. because the glyphs were a lot softer, that makes it mm -hmm. super easy to suck them in mm -hmm. um, because those wheels can sort of like compress around them. While the stones, because of their rough shape, it's easier to get them jammed in and not have right. them mold around and sort of get inside the intake. Um, mm -hmm. And I think having a wheel-based intake is really going to be comparable to those claw intakes. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be something really interesting to see because you saw in Relic Recovery, a lot of those top teams were dominating with those wheel-based intakes. And mm -hmm. we honestly don't really know how it's going to turn out in this year because Relic Recovery, you could pick up two stones, two uh, glyphs, and mm -hmm. this year you can only pick up one stone. So that's mm -hmm. an interesting thing too, that you can only pick up one stone this year. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> jumping into Iowa and Nebraska. Um, so Iowa-Nebraska is a new combination region. Um, one of the things that I think pushed Nebraska into fusing with Iowa was probably the single slot thing. And I think they also had an affiliate partner um, resign last year. But it, I'm happy with it. It's something I've been trying to get happen for a little while. Um, I really want to see more combination regions in FTC. It seems really solid. Anyway, uh, Iowa-Nebraska teams are doing really well early season this year, which is kind of standout-ish for Iowa. Um, we have two outstanding teams, I think, of course. Uh, 10435, the Circuit Breakers, and 7236, Recharged Green, as number one and number three on FTC stats for non-penalty OPRC, with 10435 holding four of the top ten scores right now, um, non-penalty, including the number one spot. 
10435 and 7236 are fairly similar design architectures this year. You've got a vertical slide with a linear deposit, um, mm -hmm. two dedicated intake motors, and servo-based claws. Uh, 10435 um, really varies in that they'll rotate a glyph out to, or excuse me, rotate a stone out to score. Um, so you get a little bit of an advantage if you're trying to jinga pattern in the first few blocks. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is an interesting strategy, and I like the idea of. But early season, I don't think we're going to see stacks tall enough to really justify that. So I think it seemed both seem pretty viable. Uh, One hundred three five has always been pretty good early season, especially for Iowa. Um, they were really strong last year and pretty good in relic recovery. Um, Seventy two thirty six really hasn't been good early season before. Um, we've uh, we us they have always kind of stunk until Statish um, <laughs> picked it up. So I'm happy to see them um, pulling ahead. I think it's just because I moved away. <laughs> <laughs> um, the third team who was on Worlds of Limbs last year from Iowa was 113.16, the Weapons of Mass Construction. Uh, I think they're ironing out some bugs in their early designs, um, and I'm really excited to see what they do once they get it kind of um, ironed out. So uh, we actually have a video up of 104.35 if we want toggle over and watch that um i really love the robot for yeah. as yeah. early in the season as it is uh, uh, they have a really interesting robot design from early season although it's very similar to some other robots it comes down to those fine details that they sort of tuned out and that driver practicing that they've done that oh, sort yeah. of led them to be one of those top teams mm -hmm. um yeah. especially like you know a lot of teams we've seen have done you know that vertical slides and horizontal slides and that wheel-based intake but the way that 10435 does it i mean they do it in a really fast and efficient way so that's something that's really interesting Mm -hmm. I think a big uh, thing is they got that two Skystone deposited auto, and that is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, one huge thing with uh, 10435 that I've uh, noticed in, like, just running matches in the FTC simulator is by flipping the stone out of their robot early, like, before they even go up to the level, you actually do save a significant amount of time and can yeah. improve your cycles by one or two stones. I mean, I remember, like, I was just practicing, uh, like, uh, during the early season, and, like, when I would, um, when I would, like, wait to flip out the stone uh, until I got to the level, I would get, like, maybe four or five stones a match, maybe sometimes six, but then once I got, uh, once I started flipping the stone out, like, before we even got near the foundation, I mean, my scores like i started scoring like two to three stones more per match on average and it's like a really big deal and uh circuit breakers has uh, seems to have definitely found that and exploiting it or not exploiting it but using it like to the greatest advantage yeah and you can see it during this match like their intake is really really fast like they just go yeah. up to that zone they just suck it right in yeah. and yeah, I mean, you can just see that it comes with a lot of practice this year. Boom, there you go. There's another stone. So yeah, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna also point out that their driving. So this robot is insane, but their <laughs> driving, I think, is really what makes them oh, amazing. Yeah. Did he, it, because like if we if we it, like the way that that match just uh, it, like two cycles ago just happened, right? Mm -hmm. They went from the from one corner of like just what they're doing right now, right? Yeah. They mm -hmm. go from one corner to the other corner of the field mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. zero rotations. They right. literally just use their mechanism wheels to get the right. entire distance of the field. Mm -hmm. I know that for a, I know for a fact that like many other teams, that single like that motion would have taken them at least six or seven seconds, right? right. And that's on a low yeah. end. But these mm -hmm. guys, their driving is just so picture perfect that allows them um, that combined with their amazing robot, I think, is really what's allowing them to um, be so dominant right now. Oh, yeah. That's such and a another Cirque thing, Breakers uh, thing, just have a really good implementation of a design that works and then just drive it really well. Mm -hmm. They always do that. Yeah. yeah. And another thing about their driving is that they're actually able to go over that middle um uh, oh, middle bridge yes, you're right yeah yeah which can be problematic sometimes especially if you have like like a ramp on your robot or something yeah that can that mm -hmm. goes really low on your on the ground mm -hmm. um and that can be sometimes problematic because you might not be able mm -hmm. to get over that bridge and you can see right like in this in this video that the their robot is able to quickly just go right over that bridge and it saves them mm -hmm. so much time compared to going yeah. you know around their alliance bridge and then maneuvering around their alliance partner and all that so I think going across that middle, it it's just a crazy time saver. Yeah. 
Um, one thing I wanted to bring up is with like when we're seeing really high sacks, you know, nine, ten, maybe even eleven, is these stones are nowhere like there are not straight at all, and you see these stacks starting to, uh, starting to like tilt one way or another. And I mean, I have seen like with personal experience, like this can have a huge effect on, uh, like on the height of your stacks. And like I've seen teams who have decided to, like they can stack eight or nine or sometimes even ten, and instead of going that high, they've just decided okay we have to stop at eight we have to stop at seven because otherwise when we go to move the foundation it's just all gonna go toast and like what do you guys think of that no absolutely i completely agree with that um i i so there's one thing that i have noticed is the way that you stack versus the way that you move is Mm -hmm. um is very important right so Mm -hmm. if you're moving so if you stack horizontally, right, let's say you stack in the long direction and you right. move outwards. So like, you, let's say we, you move towards me right now. I think you can see this on, on my, on my cam, but like, if you do that, it's a, um, it's a lot more, um, your, your, your tower is a lot more precarious than if you stack mm-hmm. vertically and move backwards. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If you move, yeah. if you, if you, it's, uh, uh, that's something that I never really thought about initially, but, um, now, now that I look at it, it's actually a very significant difference. Yeah. So I think that if teams have the ability to make that manipulation or if mm-hmm. they have the ability to utilize that strategy, that's something that can work for them really well. And uh, another Tyler, thing on that note, Uh, Tyler, do you think we can uh, play the end of that match really quick, like the last 10 seconds? Uh, One thing I wanted to point out here is how Circuit Breakers decides to move the foundation. Instead of, like, grabbing onto it with, like, uh, some foundation hook or anything like that, they just shove it slightly. Oh, actually, Circuit Breakers didn't do this match. Uh, But one thing I've seen with other teams is they just get into the corner and they shove it slightly. And since the blocks, uh, since the stones are on, like, the center of rotation, it doesn't affect them that much. And I think that's going to be an extremely effective way uh, in moving the foundation later in the season. Um, Absolutely. No, but Neutrinos did do it in their match. I remember, like, I definitely remember from them is, like, uh, their implementation of it was perfect. Like, with a seven high stack, they were able to do it really quickly and effectively. But, yeah, Ashri? Uh, sorry about that. I was about to say, I was going to say um, about their... Um, I honestly forgot what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's all <laughs> good. Anyways, it happens to um, all of us. So, yeah, moving that foundation over... Uh, without having to use a separate hook or anything, that can also save some time because once your robot's already in that corner and already sort of yeah. parked, yeah. all you have to do is sort of move the robot over very slowly, which you can yeah. control the speed of, and mm-hmm. then you're already in the corner. So, I mean, that mm-hmm. sort of gives you that advantage in terms of timing. Um, yeah. That sort of helps you out. Mm-hmm. All right, let's jump over to Michigan. Um, Michigan, we always seem really, really strong teams early season. I think a lot of that is um, they are a primarily middle school program and I think they're working around the FRC season that starts in January. So you've got December state championships, which pushes teams to be really solid early season, um, where a lot of FTC teams, especially in the East, are looking at state championships in February and March and are just planning their seasons a little later. So we see a lot of really good middle schoolers, even when compared to high school teams, (laughs) um, which is always really awesome. Uh, One of the standout teams for me, is always 13-9-17. Um, they're number two in the world in OPRC right now and are just <laughs> rocking it. Um, they've got an early season robot reveal, which I always like seeing from teams. Um, it's fairly uncommon. And I, it's another one of those, like, really simple. Looks pretty easy for a lot of teams to build, but it's really good. Um, yeah. So that's always a really nice thing to see from teams early season. Mm-hmm. It's just like, so, yeah, you're some inspiration. Video. Yeah, so in that video, you can you saw like right in their autonomous, uh, they're actually able to move the stone without disturbing the other sky stone. So that's mm-hmm. an interesting thing that when you're using wheels, it tends to disturb the other stones in that row. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. that's one thing that's really interesting to see. So if you in, in case you missed it, um, in in that autonomous, what just happened was the first sky stone that um, uh, what thirteen nine one seven went for. They they intake it with their wheels, but they intake it in a way that it messed up like with the one or two stones around it, but it didn't mess up the other sky stone, which is interesting. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a great point, Andre. For sure. Um, my other not- notable mentions from Michigan are, of course, one of three oh nine and fifteen four sixty five. Um, all really good teams who do well, um, very often. 
And I'm really excited to watch the state championships and see. They always have a different take on the game than I think the rest of the states do. Yeah, for sure. Um, after that, we have a lot of regions um, that either we don't have any data on or who haven't had any events. So if you're from Indiana, Minnesota, um, or let's see, let's, mm, I think it was the two big ones, in Indiana or Minnesota. Um, make sure you guys submit your data to TOA, or if there's anybody from those regions in our chat, make sure you jump into our Discord and send us some links to some videos we always like to see. North Dakota, Ohio, and Wisconsin haven't had any events so far. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.